Today we're going to learn about the perfect tense of the active indicative. But before we jump into that, let's look at a verb. Now remember, each verb has four principal parts. Here we have woko, wokare, wokawi, wokatum, the verb to call. And we're very familiar with these first two principal parts. The first one is simply the first person singular in the present, I call. And of course, our second principal part is our infinitive. It's the to form of the verb, in this case, to call. And we haven't really worked with any of the other principal parts. Today, we're going to finally use that third principal part, wokawi. And this is where we get our stem for the perfect tense. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that third principal part, we're going to drop off our I, and that will give us our perfect stem. In this case, wokau and we'll add our perfect endings to this. So, now let's jump into a verb chart. Once again, up top we have our verb, woka, wokari, wokawi, wokatum. For the perfect tense, you go to that third principal part in green, you drop off your I, and that gives you your stem for all of these. And then to that stem, we're going to add our new endings. And our endings are e, isti, it, imus, istus, eront. Once again, these are just things that you're going to have to memorize, so get used to seeing these. The first person singular, woka we, second person singular, woka wisti, third person singular, woka wit, first person plural, woka wimus, second person plural, woka wistus, third person plural, woka werunt. And of course, the meanings for these. Now there's two ways to translate the perfect tense either using have or has, or you can just simply use the ed form of the verb. Here I've written down the have or has forms because these are the less confusing and most proper, especially moving on in later levels of Latin. And this is how I prefer you to translate them. But note that woke how we, our first person singular, can be translated I have called or simply I called. Woke how wisti, you have called, or you called. Woka wit, he, she, it, has called, or he, she, it, called. Woka wimus, we have called, or we called. Woka wistus, y'all have called, or y'all called. And woka werunt, they have called, or they called. Now the beautiful thing about the perfect tense is that when we move to our irregular verb, sum esse fui, which is our verb to be, which remember is irregular in the present tense, the imperfect tense, and the future tense, all three that we've seen so far. However, when we get to the perfect tense, we're going to follow the same rules that we normally do. We go to that third principal part, fui, in the green up there. We drop our I, and that's going to give us our stem for the perfect of the verb to be. And our stem is fu. And to this stem, we add the same exact endings. E, is, the it, imus, is, this, iran. So, Sum esse fui, in the perfect tense of the active indicative, is in fact regular, unlike all of its other forms. And once again, our meanings here, fui is I have been, fuisti, you have been, fuit, he, she, or it has been, fuimus, we have been, fuistus, y'all have been, fuerunt, they have been. All right, now that we've seen these charts and hopefully you're beginning to memorize them. Take your time, write down the forms, make flashcards, whatever it takes, but let's practice them a little bit. So in front of you right here we have four verbs and next to that you have a person and number. What I want you to do is give me the person and number indicated for the verb in the perfect tense. Now would be a good time to pause the recording Take a few minutes and work on these. We'll come back together and go over them in a few. All right, let's start with number one. We have amo, amare, amawi, amatum in the third person singular of the perfect tense. Remember, we're always going to go to that third principal part, amawi, drop our I, that gives us our stem, and we're going to add our ending it. Ama wit is he, she, or it has loved. Number two. Wolo, wolari, wolawi, wolatum in the first person plural. Once again, we're talking about the perfect tense, so we're going to go to the third principal part, wolawi, and drop our I and add our ending, imus. So here we have wolawimus, we have flown. Now for number three, sto, stare, stati, statum. 
This is a slightly irregular verb because our third principal part doesn't follow our normal pattern. It's not ending in A, V, I, instead it's E, T, I. But it doesn't matter. We still follow our same rules. We go to that third principal part. We drop our I, and that gives us our stem. We add our second singular ending, and it's statisti. You have stood. And same thing with number four, sum essay fui. Though this is our irregular verb to be, in the perfect tense, it's going to follow the same rules and actually be regular. So we go to the third principal part, fui. Drop the I. It gives us our stem, fu. We add our third person plural ending, errant, to make fuerant. They have been. So, our takeaways from this lesson. Of course, you need to memorize your perfect tense endings, which are e, isti, it, imus, istus, errant. You also have to know how to translate these. And remember, the stem for these endings comes from the third principal part. You drop off your I. And it forms regular with these endings, even for the verb sum asse fui, which is our normally irregular verb to be. And remember, when we're translating it, we're translating it have or has whatever the verb means. So have or has flown, have or has ran. We could also translate it with just the ed form of the verb, but I would prefer that you use have or has when translating the perfect tense.